Hi, I'm Gary Brown. Uh, myself and some of my friends. This is my son Clay, and uh, they got Donald here on the uh, on the on the camera. Uh, we're the ones that some of the people to put these vehicles together. We were fed up with our high fuel prices. We figured, you know, if you can't find a vehicle that gets the kind of mileage you want, maybe you just have to build it. I was raised on a farm, and I've been around farm equipment all my life. Also, my brother and I have operated the farm equipment uh, rebuilding shop for 30 years. We rebuild farm tractors. We need that farm tractors are much more fuel efficient than automobiles. And I've always felt like there was a little dirty politics involved in that thing somewhere. So what we did is we bought some vehicles. This is a 95 Ford pickup truck, F-150. We bought this truck for $3,000. We bought it, ran like new, but we pulled a big engine out. It had a lot of miles on it. It was a cheaper vehicle. It was clean, it was pretty, it had a nice interior. So we pulled the gasoline engine out. And what we did is we installed, we went to install a four-cylinder Ford tractor motor because we mostly work on Fords. But the four-cylinder was too heavy, so what we did is we went back and exchanged. We took the four-cylinder motor back out and put a three-cylinder in. So from the very start, I was making one mistake after another. Even though the four-cylinder was too heavy, it would have been much smoother than the three-cylinder. The three-cylinder did not have enough horsepower, so I added a supercharger to it, which was $3,700. I'm doing everything wrong. That's what I told people to start with. When you start something like this, you're going to do everything wrong you possibly can, I guess, to start with. So we went back to the three-cylinder with the supercharger to boost the horsepower. Now, these things aren't that hard to build. You can buy things. Uh, this came out of a uh, wood chipper machine. It had a four-cylinder Ford motor in it. It had the bell housing, clutch, pressure plate assembly, with a disconnect lever. And um, we took that off. We just slid a T5 five-speed overdrive transmission in the back. So we opened the back transmission in the back. We had to make our own motor mounts. We had to make those fit. We had to change the front slip yoke on the transmission and shorten the drive staff for a little bit. Now, we added a 12-volt vacuum pump. So we have vacuum to run our brakes, and if you had automatic, it would shift the transmission, which some of the vehicles later on would be. And also this works your air conditioner controls. But basically what we got here is a package. Now this truck right here, when we first built it, we were tickled with it. We had a lot of money in it, a lot of things we did wrong to start with, including the three-cylinder engine, because it's not as smooth as before. We later had the engine blueprint in balance, trying to get the shake out of it, but it just didn't work. But we love the truck. We call it old shaky. Now on the road, it smooths out. It does fine. This vehicle runs 100 miles an hour. It gets about 40 miles to a gallon. Power steering, power brakes, air, full-size truck. And uh, it, it, it's our, we, call it our, we call it old shaky or, old, or our baby, whichever one you want to call it. But this truck right here, we spent a lot of extra money on it. We learned later on some shortcuts and things that worked better, but this was our start. This just happened to be the ones we found that were sold that were high miles, low price, clean, pretty bodies and interiors. If we found Chevrolet's first, we'd have bought Chevrolet's or Dodgers, it wouldn't have made any difference to us. Toyota or whatever. Now in our second, and this vehicle was one of the last pickups we built, we got an engine out of a Jacobson J10 reel cutter. Now Toro had the same thing. It's got a 4-236 four-cylinder Perkins engine, and it had a, a bell housing on the back, and it had a a heavy-duty Chevy truck transmission. We didn't want a heavy transmission, we wanted overdrive. So we took the heavy-duty transmission out, went to a salvage yard, and we got them to exchange it for an overdrive transmission. So what we got here now is basically we've got a Ford truck, we've got a Perkins engine, we like to put in a Massey Ferguson farm tractor, and these things in a lot of other applications, skid steers, mud pumps, generators, um, irrigation pumps, all sorts of things. So this, this particular engine was put in here for this, for this pickup. Now this engine was about 75 horsepower. We later added a turbo to boost it just a little bit. Now, after we mounted this one in this truck, this, this, this taught us some things that you really got to need to have a four cylinder. It's much smoother, operates much better. Now again, we used a 12 volt vacuum pump to run the brakes and the air conditioning. And uh, we did things under the hood to try to save belts and pulleys. Like for instance, we've got a 12 volt uh, uh, thermostat operated fan to cool the radiator. You don't have to go to large radiators on these trucks. Standard radiators in the vehicles work fine. Uh, we've got a lot of sophisticated stuff here, like this is an exhaust pipe that connects the hoses from the tractor engines of the truck. Uh, these pipes right here are just water pipes to connect the water the heater system off this engine. I think that came from Lowe's or Home Depot or somewhere. Uh, but it's just, um, it's not that complicated. You know, if you wanted a house built and you had this set of plans, you said, you know, this is my dream home. This is what I want. If you can't, if you can't build a house yourself, you don't say, well, I can't build a house. I'll never have this house. 
What you can do is you can get a mechanic, and include, believe me, there's plenty of them out of work right down this financial meltdown we're in. You can get a mechanic to take our book, which, by the way, we sell on the internet, and uh, go out and hunt down the material you need, the, the top right running gear that you want for whatever application you have, and have them put it together. Now, if you go to one of these fancy college-educated uh, mechanics and like it in new dealerships, they'll be completely lost. You got to go out there and you got to go to one of these old-time auto parts places and ask them who's the mechanics around town that's done dirt track, off-road, uh, drag strip, maybe a little bootlegging. That's the people to talk to. These mechanics can put these things going. And uh, it's not really that hard. You just have to have the determination to get in there and actually do it. Now these vehicles run clean, they run safe, they're comfortable to ride in on the highway, they, they run good in traffic. Uh, you can drive these things, uh, every one we've built so far run over 100 miles an hour, every last one of them. Yet everybody calls me and says, I bet they won't run 40 miles an hour. Wrong. I don't know where to get the idea they won't run any faster than that. These things have all run 100 miles an hour or better. And uh, I, I don't know where people get the misconception because the police and it just won't run. There's a drag strip vehicle on, 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 out there on the market today that's running about like 160 miles an hour and a quarter mile. You know, that's uh, with a diesel and, uh, and that proves the diesel is not slow. But uh, when you put this package together, you just have to put together what you want and, and, and something to do your job. Now, if you want to go to a one-ton or a larger vehicle, you go to a larger engine. Just like you go to an S10 or a Ranger for a smaller pickup or something like a Isuzu or a Toyota, you go down to a smaller engine. I suggest on an engine like that, you go to like a Kubota four-cylinder 60-65 horse turbo diesel engine. That'll be fine. That'll do what you want to do. man called me last week. And uh, he just put a four-cylinder 65 horse Kubota four-cylinder turbo diesel engine in a 99 Isuzu truck. He was very pleased with it. We've had, I've talked to people across this country. People have bought this book, and for some reason, this inspired them. One guy put a 4020 John Deere engine in a, a Class A 48-foot motorhome. We've got people that's put uh, these small Kubota engines and, uh, uh, in uh, Jeeps, and uh, I'm not talking about just like the Cherokee, I'm talking about the CJ7s and 5s. And uh, any time you change out a gasoline engine and go to a diesel engine, you're going to get two to three times the gas mileage simply because the diesel burns the fuel more efficiently. Two-thirds of the gasoline you pour in that tank, whether it's $2 a gallon or $10 a gallon, blows out the exhaust. A uh, diesel burns about 98% of the fuel that goes through the engine. It, it's more thorough. It burns the engine. It uh, burns more uh, thoroughly in the engine. You don't have as much waste. And it's much more economical. Now, another thing about diesels, diesels last two to three times as long. It's not uncommon to have diesel power like Mercedes-Benz automobiles that'll run half a million miles without even a, without without overhaul. And uh, these large trucks, some of them run half a million to more miles without overhaul. Diesels generally last longer to get better mileage. They're, they're, they're less finicky, they're easier service. Uh, I just believe that we got a we got a conspiracy to rob us blind. That's the meltdown in this country we, we've seen in the last in the last few months. I hate to be one that says I told you so, but I told you so. These oil companies will rob us blind. They're giving tight money to the senators and the congressmen. They buy them off. They're buying off the networks with a giant millions and millions of dollars in advertising money. And we're left just to be victims. They're, they're, they're cleaning us out. If anybody believes that the housing industry brought our economy down, I've got some nice beachfront property in Tennessee. I'll make you an outstanding deal on it. And I'll throw in a, 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 a bushel basket of porcupine eggs to go with it. Uh, it, it it's, the, it's the oil companies that robbed us. that brought our economy to its knees. We, what we got to do, we got to stop these. We got to stop our senators and congressmen from getting that tax money. If, if, if every dollar they take costs us millions, we got to stop it. It's got to be done. I want to show you one more bit.